name of God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's sofa service. It's been a week of changes and things gradually opening up. I've been in my bubble with my, my children at school and so far, God willing, everything has gone well and everyone's been having a, a good time, lots of learning. Uh, we're particularly welcoming you today if you're coming to the sofa service for the first time. Uh, it's wonderful to have you with us. Jonathan, how's the week been for you? Well, are you Jane, it's been a, a week where we're looking to see what it might be like as we ease our way out of lockdown. So we're putting plans in place for the safe opening of the churches for individual or family group private prayer in a couple of weeks time. And, uh, and yet we're still dealing with the consequences of lockdown. Uh, we've had a, a real, uh, put a real plea out for people to find ways to continue to give to support the life of the church. It's not been easy, but uh, we're seeing some really, really positive signs of people finding new ways to give. And we're so grateful and it does fill us with a real sense of encouragement. Mm, um, and also, I have to say, I received a, a, a a card in, in the in, in the post and in it there was a check uh, and a lovely note saying this is just because I know it's it's been hard financially for the church in lockdown and it has um, I hope this helps and I quickly let the um, the treasurer know um, and then he got back to me to say I've just received the, the check that uh, you left for me to pick up Jonathan um, the only thing is you uh, you left a naught off it so instead of being some hundreds it was some thousands of pounds. <laughs> my word, um, that yeah. was very special and, uh, and really very needed uh, mm -hmm. as, as well. But uh, yeah, I'm also feeling a sense of well, where are we going to end up as we ease out of lockdown? What is it that we've experienced in lockdown? And what are we going to hold on as we move out into the new normal? More of that maybe mm -hmm. as we reflect uh, later in the service. Yeah. Okay. So we it's prayer time, I think. Uh, yeah. We're in the season of Trinity. Uh, we've been through some wonderful moments in the storytelling of the church together through Lent and Holy Week, Easter, Ascension, Pentecost. Uh, and now in Trinity season, which is sometimes called Kingdom season, that time where we have weeks to reflect on what it means to be those who are building up God's kingdom of justice and peace. And that sentiment, I think, is reflected in the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. Let's pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I think we're going to move to our Bible reading now. As we record this this morning, uh, we have just finished doing our, our vigil of solidarity with the Black Lives Matters movement. And um, it was wonderful to share and hear from Bruno, one of the vicars up at Bishop Loffer School, but also part of the Revelation Family Church, lived in Chichester for 25 years. And he shared with us some of his struggles, some of the things he has faced in dealing with racism that he himself and his family have been a victim of. And he talked about 
not responding to racist comments uh, up until this point because of wanting to keep the peace, keep quiet and keep the peace, I think, were his words. As we read the Bible reading this morning, um, where Jesus is talking to his disciples about what the experience of going out and spreading the word of Jesus and his messages about God in their community, uh, I'm mindful of some of those conflicts and some of those difficulties that um, are experienced both today and then. So this is the, the, the reading. This is from Matthew, and um, this is our gospel for today. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore I ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphas and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaan and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bags for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, Find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the Day of Judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. So once again we can pause as we just hold on to those words or phrases that struck us. Stimulated thought, engaged our heart. we heard of the calling of the twelve disciples.
During lockdown, we've all had to take a different look at being Christian, of practising our faith. Justin Welby, the Archbishop, announced at the very start of lockdown, church is going to change, and so it has. Early on in lockdown, I was talking to an experienced clergy person and we were talking about the mission, the work of the church and how it will be affected by lockdown. And she gave me a phrase which has stuck with me all these weeks. Very simple, it's just two words. Be Jesus. A kind of radical distillation, refining of what it means to be called, just as we heard from scripture today, verse, verse 12, were called. Be Jesus. I've also, through this time of lockdown, been blessed, as have many of us, by making more time to listen to the wisdom of others, to share in the ways others worship and express their faith. We spoke of worship last Sunday and how what we worship and indeed how we worship says so much about the things that really matter, the things that have true worth in our lives. One such wise one for me this lockdown has been Richard Raw, a Franciscan friar. And I came across this sentence. We keep saying we love Jesus, but it is more as a God figure than someone to imitate. We keep saying we love Jesus, but it's more as a God figure than someone to imitate. It really resonated with me, reflecting on those two words, be Jesus. Richard Raw goes on to say this on following Jesus. I'd like to share these words with you. I think sometimes it's important that we share wisdom. Over the past few decades, our Christianity seems to become more and more obsessed with what Christians believe rather than how Christians live. But in Jesus, we don't just see a demonstration or presentation of doctrines, but an invitation to join a movement that is about demonstrating God's goodness in the world. We know these past few days reflecting on those movements for change in response to racial injustice, victimisation and oppression. We know that this weekend there will be a protest, there is being a protest, a demonstration in Chichester and that stirred up many conflicting feelings amongst many I've spoken to about it. It's a witness, though, to that movement that we know as Black Lives Matter. It's a group of people, some of whom are people of Christian faith, who do themselves want to be something for the sake of someone else. And no doubt within that there will be a risk. Richard Raw goes on to say, the following of Jesus is not a salvation scheme or a means of creating social order as much as it is a vocation to share the fate of God for the life of the world. Some people are overly invested in religious ceremony 
rituals and rules, the whole package and fabric of doing religion that seem to be more about who's in and who's out. Jesus did not come to create a spiritual elite or an exclusionary system. No, he invited people to follow him, to follow him by personally bearing the mystery of human death and resurrection. Of itself, this task does not feel religious, which is why it demands a depth of true faith to trust in it. As we ease our way out of lockdown and contemplate the opening of that church door, I hope and pray that it will not be an opening to lock us in, but rather an opportunity to reopen a space where we can continue to explore all that we have discovered in lockdown. Having had the opportunity to lay aside so many of those preoccupations. The Gospel reading today is strong in places and it reminds us of that following Jesus which is a position of radical trust. We are to take no gold or silver or copper in our belts, no bag for our journey, or two tunics or sandals or even a staff. We're to go out trusting that what we are called to be in Christ is all we need for the journey as those who are to be agents of God's transforming love. As a church leader, I know how quickly I can be locked in through the preoccupations of religiosity of the organisation, of the institution. I want to share with you that this has been for me a time of immense freedom and a sense of real possibility. Also a time for me of re-envisioning what it might be to say, I lead a church. Too easily I would have said, they're lovely, medieval buildings in a beautiful part of the world. But aren't we, aren't they more than that? Our buildings are a symbol in our communities of that message of transforming love. They are the places where historically we have gathered over centuries drawn by that same love of God in Christ, that we may be sent out into the world. Churches are places of departure as much as they are places in which we gather. Let us hope and pray that opening up our churches will not result in us being locked in to buildings, to the running of buildings, to the ways in which institutions, organisations have to govern themselves in ways that frankly to many of us seem not only so outdated but so unfit for the mission of the church, which is to be Jesus. We all know well that last line we heard read today, that we are to go out into a world where we will encounter hostility, 
we will encounter those forces which seek to blunt our message. We've over-rehearsed pre-lockdown our neuroses and paranoia that nobody seems to want to be coming to church anymore. No, they don't want to be coming to church, but we want to be coming to them. We will need to be wise as serpents, to be smart about the business of living out that calling, to know when it's time to move on because this place, this situation is just not ready for that message of hope. Who wants to push water uphill? We're in the business of saying to people, let go of yourselves and feel that fresh water flowing over you and reviving and refreshing your souls. We also need to be in the business of more deeply understanding human thirst for those streams of living water. Many have said kind words about the things we've been up to as Harbour Churches, and especially these surface services. What will end as lockdown ends? What will we need to pick up that we've put down? What will we need to continue to carry? Because we discovered it, we picked it up in lockdown. We should be excited. We should be, maybe yes, a little nervous. But above all, we should be hopeful. For after all, we have been called. Jesus has said, come and follow me. And in following me, be like me. Do as I do. That is the true worship of Jesus. That's all he ever asked. He never said, make me a building and then get on your knees and worship me. He said, make me a kingdom after my Father, a heavenly kingdom, God's kingdom. What a calling. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our prayer today was gifted at the Vigil of Solidarity for Black Lives Matters this morning. It's a beautiful prayer. And Jonathan and I both felt there was nothing more appropriate at this time than to share it with all of you. So let us... Sit or kneel in a place of comfort and security. Let's draw our breath slowly in and out. As we invite the Holy Spirit to fill us with love this morning. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Lord God, we pray that you would open our hearts as we meet to pray during this season of Trinity. 
a time when we give thanks for the unity and equality that reigns in heaven. Give us, we pray, a burning desire to see that unity and equality here on earth. Forgive us for our sins of omission, of greed and of blindness, and for our sometimes unwitting silence in the presence of racial discrimination. Help those who have been wronged to forgive also, that they may be freed from the burden of unforgiveness. And as we receive your unmerited forgiveness, place in us a desire to gain understanding and compassion instead of living in ignorance and with indifference. We recognise, Lord, our struggle is not only against forces in the world, but that it is a struggle in the heavenly realms for your kingdom to come on earth as promised in scripture. For every man, woman and child is created equal before you. Lord, equally valued, equally loved, Remembering the struggle of our brothers and sisters, may we grasp at the present time that our plenty can supply what they need. So in turn their plenty will supply our need. We are one people before you, Lord. Come Holy Spirit, and protect this message of transformation from corruption, misappropriation and violence. Keep the need for justice and equality as pure and unblemished as the aim of your church and each of us as individual believers. For the sake of Jesus, who died for all. Amen. Amen. And in our prayers, we've been asked to lay before God's healing presence, especially Clive and Derek, both undergoing treatment for cancer. Judy also with cancer and following her recent emergency visit to hospital. For Margaret, who has been weak these past few weeks and recently fell. For Judith also, who has asked for our prayers. And take a moment now to Place on the altar of love in your heart those whom you cherish, but who in their need, in their suffering, you also must place in trust before the healing presence of God. And let us gather up these and all our prayers as we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. So Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for making the time to share together in this sofa service. Mm. I was chatting with someone this week and uh, they said it's been lovely actually to get to know you both better <laughs> and Jane as well. Um, our closing song today, uh, we've chosen it because it speaks very much to this present time of pandemic, but also this present time of recognising another deep and desperate illness, which is the virus of racism in society. This song is one of the great Negro spirituals, certainly too many of us kind of did it to death in primary school and so now we kind of shudder and cringe it also has maybe some difficult memories and sat around we, we campfires like but as, yeah <laughs> but actually it's our courting song it's our courting song uh, when i uh, first <laughs> went to see if i could catch jane's eye uh, uh it was uh, uh on a beach Herring island and i turned up and jane was there with all her friends who all seemed to be surfers and were all blokes. So I felt a bit intimidated um, being certainly no surfer. Anyway, there was a guitar and a fire and we sat round and we thought, what shall we sing? And of course, thankfully, the blokes being quite blokish all sort of hung their heads in a little bit of shyness. And I perked up and said, how about we sing Kumbaya, my Lord, knowing that probably all those guys would clear off. And they pretty much did. Just left me and Jane. <laughs> it could also be that Tim and the Jane you on the guitar. It probably knows? was, actually. <laughs> Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, but there is a resonance with this today, yeah. isn't there, that... It's uh, this version I first heard uh, by Soweto Gospel Choir. Uh, it's a beautiful version of Kumbaya, much, much better than uh, the one John and I ploughed our way through the night we first first met. But um, uh, it's been recorded, re-recorded by a group called Gospel Touch. Uh, to say that lives matter, there's, there's a brilliant chorus in it saying, um, Oh Lord, hear our prayer. As I lift my voice and say, we need you, Lord. We need you right away. We need you, Lord. And the, the presence of God, the support of God for all of us as we cope with coronavirus, as we cope with the tidal wave of emotion that has come from the murder of George Floyd. This, this is a song that unites all of us in our sense of being carried by God. Come here, God, come by here. We need you. And this is the song that we would like to leave you with today. And let's end as we say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of and God. the love of God. And, and the, the fellowship, fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Be, be with, with us, us all, all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen.